Uh, there were 4,901 more murders in 2020 than 2019. Violent crime was up 5.6%, and property uh, damage due to crime uh, was costing the nation $17.8 billion. Many of you have asked about defund the police. How and when did it start? And some of you think you know the answer. And you think the answer is George Floyd's death, his tragic death uh, at the hands of police. And I hate to uh, break this to you, but that's not when the defund the police movement started. It goes back to black feminists. They started an abolition of the prison industrial complex, as they described it. And so they have pressed for years, and it's something that is rooted in Marxist ideals, this whole idea that we don't need the police, and that when it comes to black people in particular, that prisons and jails and incarceration has been a way uh, to control black people. We uh, became aware of it uh, nationwide after George Floyd's death, but it's been around for a long time and anyone who studied Marxist literature would know that. And the consequences of it, I think we see the consequences of it all across our nation where there has been a 30% increase in crime since 2020. And uh, the murder rate in particular, which was declining, it has increased significantly. And if you look at the crime that's taking place in our neighborhoods, we find that young people at um, uh, young people, younger and younger ages are committing violent crimes. And one of the most heart wrenching ones happened a few months ago when a 78 year old black man came out of a CVS and he was uh, carjacked by two uh, young black people I don't remember whether they were teenagers or early 20s, and not only did they kill this man, they backed over him with the car as part of their getaway. And we just see these crimes taking place, and I believe that many people believe that it is connected to the defund the police movement because it's resulted in so many police officers leaving policing altogether, and it's not an occupation that is as desirable as it once was. Plus the defund the police movement pressured uh, many uh, state and local governments to cut back on the financing for police. So there's been fewer resources for police officers, some of them reluctant to stop criminals and to police the way they did in the past. And I think we suffer as a consequence because in the black community, uh, black people uh, in inner city communities tend to be um, victims of crime. Black on black crime uh, is something that's very familiar. And if you ask, what do uh, the people want? What do black people want? There was a survey a couple of years ago that showed that 80% of black people wanted more police presence. They were not happy with the interactions with the police, but they wanted more police presence in their communities. That makes a lot of sense because there's more crime in their communities. I think the lesson is the defund the police movement associated with Black Lives Matter and TIFA and various radical progressive groups has not been good for the black community. Crime has escalated. And if you think about it, uh, criminals, uh, it was not just the fact that police have kind of backed away from policing in some parts of the country because they're afraid that they'll get in trouble. They may end up in prison because now we send police officers to prison for doing what they were taught sometimes by the book. So some of these police officers that have gone to jail, they were following their training. And think about that, let that sink in. Because whatever job you're in, they usually train you to do it in a particular way. In some cases, these police officers were following their training. And as a consequence, they were indicted You know, uh, by a jury. They were tried first by the media, indicted. And so the consequence has been it's less safe for black people in America, less safe for everyone. 
And uh, it's harder, I think, for us to go about our daily lives because we're all at risk. Any of us that drive a nice car are at risk of being uh, carjacked. And it can happen anywhere, any time of day. We are less safe. And so the defund the police movement has not been good for black America. It has not been good for our nation. And we need to change policing, but we need to go back and, uh, and rethink some of these things because we need police. Uh, we need police and we need to support law enforcement. Now, now what's the impact of defunding the police and removing funding from police officers? Now, bear with me, I'm gonna read you some stats. And these stats are from 2020. It's much worse now. The stats from 2022, 2021, much worse. Uh, 2020, after G George Floyd's death, there was a 30% increase in murder, according to the FBI statistics on crime. Uh, there were 4,901 more murders in 2020 than 2019. Violent crime was up 5.6%, and property uh, damage due to crime uh, was costing the nation $17.8 billion. That's a lot of money. And so um, we pay a price when we remove police or make it harder for them to do their jobs. And with police, and I've had a lot of experience talking to police officers. I ran for mayor of Nashville in uh, 2018, 2019 as well. Uh, obviously I didn't win, but I spent a lot of time talking uh, with police officers. And what I learned is they're like the rest of us. Like when they choose their occupations, many of them felt called to go into law enforcement. They can tell you their story. And one of the stories that really uh, uh, struck a chord with me was this officer that talked about being in an abusive home situation and the police officer that rescued uh, this child. His memory is the police officer came and put him up on his shoulders and held him and at that moment, he knew he wanted to be a police officer. And there's so many moving stories like that about children that were rescued by police or police, you know, saved some family member and they choose to become a law enforcement officer. And this whole idea that police officers have it out to get black people, that is so false, so terribly, terribly false. And there's so many stories of police officers using their own money and they don't make that much to buy food for people. Uh, they Sometimes they will apprehend a shoplifter, feel sorry for that person, take them to the grocery store. They've purchased, uh, you know, bicycles for kids. And so they're doing a lot of things that they're not getting credit for. So we need to support police officers. We need to stand up for police officers and more of us. And I realize, you know, that the Blexit audience includes everyone. And so I'm not just talking to black people, I'm talking to everyone more of us who feel called to do so should go into law enforcement. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed uh, this episode. Be sure to leave a comment. It would be great if it was positive, but I really want to know what you think. So leave a comment. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, tell your friends about it, and support Blexit and its mission. Thank you.